It may as well be Neutron Star Week here on Science Get because we're talking about yet another neutron star collision. No, this one wasn't witnessed by Hubble or the Very Large Telescope, but it's a collision which scientists think may have not only helped to form our solar system, but also gave Earth its precious metals in the process. We're talking about a neutron star collision, which might have happened 100 million years before the formation of our solar system's planetary disk at a distance of 1,000 light years. Intrigued? You better be, because we're diving headfirst into the evidence. But first, be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss a video. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Echoes of Olympus Mons, and this is Science Get. We mentioned in our video on that amazing kilonova witnessed recently that scientists believe that neutron star collisions often result in seeding nearby star system with precious metals like gold. This is possible because during such collisions, a neutron star can emit a negatively charged electron, becoming a proton and changing an atom's identity. Elements like gold, platinum, and plutonium are created through a process known as rapid neutron capture. Essentially, these neutrons are gobbled up by an atomic nucleus before it has a chance to radioactively decay. If you're sitting there and thinking, hey, there's a ton of gold, platinum, and uranium here on Earth, then you're way ahead of us, and stop it. Rapid neutron capture, otherwise known as R capture, only occurs during the most powerful explosions, like supernovas and kilonova events resulting from neutron star collisions. The presence of gold, platinum, and plutonium on Earth is exactly why scientists are currently searching for the remnants of a neutron star collision, which would have seeded our solar system with these precious metals. But these physicists from Columbia University of Florida aren't combing the skies, not yet at least. They're using the original decaying material left on our own planet to trace its origins. It's been estimated that a supernova occurs in our galaxy every 50 years or so, but neutron star collisions are much rarer, being estimated to occur every 100,000 years. I know what you're thinking though. If neutron star collisions are so rare, then isn't it more likely that a nearby supernova would have seeded our solar system with precious metals? Good question. But no, it isn't. And the answer to why that is lies in the quantities of these precious metals our solar system possesses. Physicist Sabolks Marka and his partner on the project aiming to discover the source of this ancient neutron star collision think that the concentrations of gold, platinum, and uranium on our planet are too low to suggest that they were seeded here by a supernova. Currently, they think the culprit must have been a neutron star collision. But where and when could this have happened? Marka and his partner, astrophysicist Imre Bartos, used meteorites from the dawn of the solar system to track down when this collision could have happened, analyzing the different isotopes of these elements in the rock samples they possessed. For those who don't know, an isotope is an element with different numbers of neutrons. Kind of like how your crazy uncle has different personalities depending on how much eggnog he- After calculating the quantity of isotopes in the early solar system, they compared their measurements with the types of isotopes produced by neutron star collisions. Marka presented his findings in January of 2020 at the winter meeting of the American Astronomical Society in Honolulu. The insides of the ancient meteorites Marka and Bartos examined contained elements from an explosion. And although those elements were radioactive initially, they've long since decayed, leaving behind a telltale signature from their past. From the data that the pair have been able to collect, they suggest that this neutron star collision must have happened 100 million years before the solar system formed, and at a distance of 1,000 light years, or 1% of the diameter of the Milky Way galaxy. Now, that might seem like it's very far away, but trust me, it's very close. So close that if you were to stand on a planet 1,000 light years from a neutron star collision, the night sky of that planet would be brightened with a new star that would outshine anything else in the sky. On how these isotopes helped him and his partner narrow down when this event occurred, Marcus said this, Each isotope is a stopwatch starting at the explosion. So basically, by studying how much of each isotope was left when those meteorites arrived in our solar system, Marka and Bartos were able to pin down the age of the collision that showered the solar system. And the concentrations currently in the solar system told them how far that kilonova would have had to have been 
to seed our solar system with 0.3% of its heavy elements. Okay, well that explains the how and the when. What about the where? The Sun has moved a lot since its birth. Like, a lot. It's estimated that 200 million years ago, during the time of the dinosaurs, it was on the other side of the galaxy. That's really cool. Our star is always moving, in fact, which makes pinning down an exact location for this neutron star collision more difficult than getting your crazy uncle to shut up about how the aliens built the pyramids. Scientists have been left stumped in searching for the stars that once belonged to the Sun's stellar nursery, too. And if they couldn't find those, what chances do Marka and Bartos have in finding the location of this neutron star collision? Well, that may be a bit of a wall for them because they can't figure out what direction these isotopes would have come from. But theoretically, if they were able to, it might give them a better idea as to where the collision happened. But there may still be hope. It's the primary task of the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, or LIGO for short, to identify potential neutron star collisions. If any observatory on Earth has the potential to figure out where this neutron star collision came from, then my money is on LIGO. For now, scientists will continue to search for the stars that were born in the Sun's original cluster. And if those are found, then it will make the job of scientists like Marka and Bartos that much easier. But just as this neutron star collision may have seeded our solar system with so much of its precious metals, if one were to happen too close to us, it could spell disaster for us here on Earth. In 2017, NASA's Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope and LIGO detected gravitational waves and electromagnetic radiation resulting from a neutron star collision in the galaxy NGC 4993. And it's been suggested that if a supernova were to occur too close to us, say about 50 light years, then it could pose imminent danger to Earth's biosphere. While kilonova are only a fraction of the brightness of a supernova, if one were to explode 50 light years from the Earth, the effects could still be deadly. Fortunately, they're extremely rare and typically produce gamma rays emitting from their poles. So such a kilonova would have to be extremely close and be pointed right at us to do any real damage. But if this were to happen, gamma rays would most likely strip off the upper layers of our atmosphere without so much as a warning and the sky would also be filled with a searing white light, outshining even the sun. And that pleasant image is exactly where we're gonna leave you. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop me a like and let me know what you think of this study and if you think we'll ever find the location of that neutron star collision. And be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss a Science Get episode. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.